Hello, hello friends, it's great to see you. Um, we are live tonight on Facebook. If you're watching this anywhere else after the fact, um, it is late September, it's getting a bit chilly. Um, and we are at a place called Hetty Pegler's Tump, or Yuli Longbarrow. Um, and we're gonna approach this amazing location in a moment. Um, I am Cassandra Raven, and this is Max Raven. Hello everyone. Hello Sally. Hello Craig. <laughs> nice Hello, to Harry. see you guys watching. Thank you so much. Um, so basically we, we've just parked up. We, we're on a, a, a sort of a, a road. There's a road behind us, but we're just about to walk into a field uh, towards the, the Long Barrow and we're going to tell you a little bit about it as we go and also tell you about the history um, and what it's all about magically as well. So we'll be discussing that and as we approach we'll be looking at the energies there and... Um, Try not and to fall in some very <laughs> large puddles. It's a very large muddy puddle right in front of us. So come with us, come and explore and see what we can find. So I thought first of all we could show you the, um, the sign of where we are so that you can have a little look. So I'm going to reverse the the camera around so you guys can actually see. There we go. Okay, so we are at Hetty Pegler's Tump, as we said before. You're looking at a 5,500 year old barrow mound. Uh, this would be in the Neolithic, which means New Stone Age, so coming towards the end of the Stone Age, beginning of the Bronze Age. Uh, and barrow mounds, for anyone who doesn't know, would be a site which would be used for burying family members. Um, it could also be a burial site for someone who's important in society and there have been ones which have been sites where it would be used as a spiritual focal point for the area or even marking the uh, borders of the land. So we've got a lot of history here. Um, thank you very much for that Max, that's, that's really amazing, really interesting. Um, so we're looking at a, a place that was built over 5,500 years ago. So. We're not lacking history here. We've got plenty of plenty of history to uh, to go with. Um, and we're going to—is it this way? Yes, it's this way. <laughs> I'm going to put my torch on as well. Trying to find our way. Well, okay. Um, my torch doesn't seem to want Your to work. Your torch isn't yeah. working. Right. Okay. okay. That's fine. We've got a torch. There we go. Right. We can see where we're going. Just about. Um, so we've, we've got a lovely evening happening here. It's, uh, the weather's not too bad considering it's the end of September. We've had some rain, but it's dry today. We can hear a little bit of traffic from the road behind us. Yeah, We're same. moving away from that, so we'll, we'll be losing that noise in a minute. It's a bit of a shame that you guys can't quite see it here because there's no light. We've got a really clear sky, full of stars. There's a fantastic half moon out. Yeah. So the atmosphere is perfect for going and exploring somewhere which is so intrinsically linked to magic, witchcraft, folklore. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be fantastic to see what sort of energies we see. It is going to be amazing to see what kind of energies we're, we're going to be facing there. Um, we're, we're not too far from home, to be honest. We've, we've kind of, we, we didn't walk here, but it's only a short drive um, from home. So we're very lucky to live near this uh, amazing location. And we have visited before during the day. Um, let's talk about some of the local history um, and lo local uh, sort of things that we've heard from other people, from locals about um, this particular I, location. I have heard from locals that um, this mound is apparently where um, one of the Pegler family used to come and do witchcraft. How true that is, I don't know, but apparently there are still Peglers living in the area. Um, we even know someone whose uh, grandmother used to get tucked into bed by a pegler. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, that's uh, that's uh, yeah. So it, it clearly is a, a local name, um, and I believe they owned the land, so that's why their name is is given to this. So it was after location. Hester Hester Pegler um, is where it's come the name. Uh, there's even strangely enough, there's even a little poem um, about Nymphsfield, and they've got. A, some sort of strange pudding named after, which is a very weird <laughs> thing to be named after. You've got yourself a mound that. of earth and a pudding. We love that. Lo local history, it's what we're um, kind of heading towards with these little videos that we've decided to do on a, on a Thursday night, um, whenever we can, whenever we can get out and uh, explore some of the um, areas local to us. We're very interested in folklore, so you'll usually see me doing ghost hunts, 
um, at various locations around the UK. Um, and I do love doing that, I do really enjoy that, but we decided to, to dig into folklore a little bit as well. We are both, um, uh, we're both linked with uh, traditional witchcraft ourselves. Um, myself, I'm, I'm a Kabbalist, so my background is in Kabbalah, and Max is a traditional witch. Would you describe yourself as a I traditional witch? I guess you could witch? say that. Um, I think one, one way it's been described is head witch, so working mm -hmm. with really yeah. traditional crafts, um, herbs, plants, um, and the very, very old beliefs um, connected to the land that you're inhabiting. So, for example, we're exploring something here, but if you're, say, in Northumbria, the beliefs and the magic, to use that word there, will be slightly different uh, to the some, something you'd experience, say, in the southwest, the southeast. Um, and the whole idea of magic is working with the land, the energies that are surrounding you, to be able to bring about a desired change. So you don't go to have to you don't have to go sacrificing virgins. Oh, it's a bit difficult to find them nowadays. But um, it's not as scary as it sounds. It's not as scary as it sounds. It's really just you know the old ways, and you'll find a lot of stuff that still is in our you know part of our tradition that we just accept. Um, you know, little things like. Well, for example, with the with the use of herbs and things like that, you know, a lot of people still use sage to cleanse their to cleanse their homes and their environments and that sort of thing. Mistletoe is a great example, although it's a bit more Christmassy than anything else. But the whole idea behind that was you would hang that at your doors around Christmas time to protect your home from bad spirits and bad energies. And in oh, we're very close now. Um, <laughs> we almost walked into it. Um, you hang it at your doorway to protect yourself uh, from negative energies and spirits um, because in folklore that is a very very magical plant it's one that grows up in the air in a tree and has it never comes into contact with the ground that's right yeah so, we'll, we'll cover those I think yeah. we'll, we'll talk more about those um, particularly seasonally um, as we go through towards Halloween and then through to uh, Yuletide as well so I think we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit for you guys too I think that um, it's really cool to be, to be able to talk about this kind of stuff as well as looking at um, the locations and the kind of energies that we pick up at the locations as well. Got okay, yeah. We have, uh, there's an energy behind you guys. We love that, <laughs> that's fantastic, thank you so much. Um, also, we can also uh, kind of talk, I mean obviously this, this isn't a public event, this is just Max and I taking a little walk and exploring the local area and looking at the folklore and things like that. So it gives us a chance to actually describe what it's like to sense these energies in a bit more detail. Um, uh, the local history is really important to us. It's something that we obviously we're, we're both interested in. We love all that stuff um, and the folklore as well. But we're able to take a little bit of time with you guys and ask you what you're sensing and picking up on here as well. And we always do that, but um, it's, it's a good thing to do for you guys as well. Um, and also to talk about things like our guides, um, other energies at locations and other different types of energies as well. So this, this really is a way for us to be able to talk in a little bit more detail about what it's like to live with the spirit worlds um, and, and that sort of thing as well. So this is so much fun, it's really good to be able to do this. Um, so we've just arrived, I'm going to turn the camera around again. Um, let us know what you're sensing, let us know what you're picking up on and um, remember that this is a local place to us that is really, it's locally pretty well known for witchcraft. We've been here before, we have visited here before. Um, hi Gail, good to see you. Um, and we have, uh, we've seen um, items that have been placed here, obviously by um, other practitioners, yeah. Uh, obviously we don't touch anything that, that, you know, somebody else has placed somewhere, we don't interfere with anybody else's energies or anything like that. But it's cool to see other people using the, the space for that as well. So, I'm going to turn the camera around and see how much you guys can see. Uh, hopefully we've got enough light on here to be able to light this up for you guys. So I'm just going to turn this round. Uh, okay, so here we go. So we've got... We've got an entrance here to a barrow mound. Um, a barrow mound... I explained a little bit about the idea of the history, but um, <coughs> when you look at a barrow mound magically, you're looking at uh, what would be 
metaphorically speaking, entrance to the underworld, to this other world. Um, the whole idea behind it permeates through um, tradition, beliefs, folklore, going all the way from the Stone Age through the classical times um, up to modern day. Um, and the idea of entering into this space, going down into the earth with the idea of the ritualistic death and then returning again in the whole cycle of death and rebirth. That's exactly it. So we, we absolutely love the... Uh, <laughs> Hi Michael, good to see you. Thank you for watching. Um, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna get Max to crawl in here in a minute. It is, it's very low. It's always good um, to be volunteer. So, <laughs> South says feagles. Yep. If I see any feagles, I'll let you know. It's probably just gonna be cave spiders and bats. Cave spiders. Yeah, we have. We've been in here before. There are cave spiders. Um, and to get in here, I mean, to get an idea of. Can you just stand in front of that, Max? To get an idea of how low that actually is. So we're looking at. Looking sort of knee level legs. below <laughs> yeah below knee level so it is literally you need to crawl on your belly to get in um and that's the only way you can get in um so obviously we don't know uh if the internet is going to cut out going under there but i think i'll poke the camera in for you guys um when max crawls in or um, once he's in there um and we'll give it a go so what kinds of things are you guys picking up on i'm actually going to show you the top of this as well i'm gonna Climb up here. Hand there. I'm fine. <laughs> it's all right. So, uh, so there's there's the entrance. Oops, a bit slippy. Grass here. Um, and then coming up over, it's just a little uh, a little mound here. But if I come up here, you can get an idea of the sort of size of it. Hopefully, a bit better. This is um, ideally located. Um, what you can't see at the moment, there is. Um, but beyond that there is a very steep rock and that would look out over the Severn Valley. Yeah. So if this was say a site for uh, the local family that owned this land, the tribe or even the tribal leader, yeah. this would be a place where they, their spirit could go to rest and overlook the land that they lived on, yeah. uh, inhabited, ruled over, whatever it happened to be. Yeah. With this particular barrow mound we know somewhere between 15 to 24 skeletons have been removed from this grave mound uh, in various excavations. Um, most of those bones now are reburied in Yulee churchyard. Okay. Um, as well as a, boar, uh, a wild boar pendant. Um, some people have speculated that that would act as a psychopomp or a totem animal animal for the tribe. Okay, let's let's talk about that because you just used a big old, big old word there. It means potatoes. <laughs> let's get this. Let's just get ourselves because it's a bit more. Uh... Oh, we're not going to fall over. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's difficult because it's very windy up there. I'm not sure people were hearing uh, exactly what was being said there. Um, so let's let's go this way around right. so people can <laughs> see where we are where we're standing. Um, so we're just in front of the entrance now. Now, you said uh, f 15... Uh, between 15 and 24. 15 and various 24. different reports have been done. Right, so, um, so, so skeletons have been removed from here. Yes, uh, so men, women and children. So the okay. likelihood is this one was used as a either family or tribe gravesite. Um, but... Um, the the whole idea behind the sort of the totem animal or a guardian animal um a a psychopomp you say yeah psychopomp which is one of the words um a good way of looking at it is um something that will guide you through to your journey in the underworld or the other world um you will see it in lots and lots of different ancient beliefs so you've got things like Tutankhamun he was buried with lots and lots of stuff these guys had one pig so not <laughs> quite as fancy, but still the same idea. You've got that totem animal, you've got that protective spirit. Um, okay, so that's is... believed to, to guide them over to the other side. Yes. In death. Okay, which fantastic. Right. Um, I have to say, uh, I, I really love the energies here. The energies here are quite intense. Um, and we're really, really looking at... <laughs> Max, your hair is epic. Um, Thank you, dear. Just read in the comments there. Oh, um, great. Uh, <laughs> so, I feel quite comfortable here, um, but that's possibly because of my background and what I do and, and that sort of thing. There's not many places that I feel uncomfortable, if I'm honest. Um, and usually the, the sort of more 
edgy or scary uh, the location, the more comfortable I am. That's just that's my job, and that's the way that the way that I am, and the things that I enjoy are the the more challenging environments and the more challenging uh, energies to deal with. Here it feels very um, very old energy. We've obviously got an ancient energy here. We're going back thousands of years. Easily, um, they they would believe that this mound would have been built in 3,500 BC or around that date. So we're looking very, very old here. Five thousand years. I mean, so. this this is this is this is incredible when you think that this has been here for so long. It's humbling, really. Um, so uh, I, I like the energies here. There are what I'm picking up on at the moment. Um, I've got two ladies over to my left, um, and they're both talking about. I'm not about one of them. I'm sorry. Max I'll, isn't I'll, one of them. I'll, I'll come over here just in case you get confused. <laughs> yeah. Um, the two ladies that are here are happy to have a conversation, they're happy to talk um, and they're talking about using this land um, for its energy and for the way that it's uh, the energy that's here and what they're talking about is respect, respecting the past and respecting the use of, of this land. Um, they're both dressed in uh, long dresses, um, they've got sort of shawls, over overcoat sort of shawls, like lots and lots of layers, lots of wool uh, sort of material in there. Um, and they've both got uh, uh, hats on that, I would say they're kind of like bonnets, but like a winter bonnet, if that makes sense. Um, they don't look, the, the clothing doesn't look particularly rich. There's not a lot of, um, you know, sort of lace and embroidery and that sort of stuff going on. It's quite plain clothing, uh, but they're clearly very warm, wrapped up very warm. Age-wise, um, the younger one, looks to be sort of uh, late 20s, early 30s, and the older one is looking sort of mid 40s um, age range. Uh, the two of them are very friendly. One of them just put her hand on my arm um, in, a, in a sort of greeting to say hello, you know, sort of hello dear, sort of put her arm on there, um, which is pretty cold. Um, but lovely energy, really lovely ladies. I do feel that they would frequently be here and I wouldn't be surprised if people see them here. Um, I've got an image also of an energy directly behind me that's playing with my ankles and this is, this might sound a little bit freaky but it's like there are hands reaching out um from the from the, the you can't low quite down see it on hole here behind if we bring us. it down because okay. we've actually got that hole uh that we were standing in front of so that is where you're feeling yeah. that energy this is where out. i'm yeah so this is where i'm feeling that's my feet this is where I'm feeling this um, uh, sort of, it's like hands just, just coming out and grabbing onto my ankles and I keep moving my feet because I keep thinking. I'm trying to read the it, comments. Is it a toad or something? <laughs> Let's have a look at the comments and see uh, Every time I go to read got. them you move it. <laughs> I know, I need to go back a little bit. So, uh, Daniel, nice to see you. Hello Daniel. Uh, yes, out of breath, yeah, we are not very fit. Um, couple of energies, male and female, Sal says. Um, not sure if they're with me or if they're with you. It's all the same. So I think you're here with us. Um, Tabitha is a name that keeps springing up for Kay. Fantastic. Okay. That um, might be worthwhile looking up because uh, yeah. there are still some records of people that own this land. Uh, so that yeah. might be something we can look up. If I can find anything um, next Thursday, if you're watching, we'll see if we can get you an answer to any of the questions Definitely. you might have as well. Definitely. Um, oh, scrolling down again. So Gail doesn't feel anything nasty, but I do think there are older spirits there. Wow, I just typed it before you said it. You must be psychic. <laughs> Excellent, thank you Gail. Um, hi Lucy, good to see you. Hi Kate, good to see you. Hi Brian. Um, so, I'm now going to make Max crawl into this thing. Um, um, I have been in before myself, I, it's, it's just that I think it's funnier to get Max to go in. Uh, he doesn't while like I spiders. It. And there's big ones in there. Yeah, there, there are cave spiders in there, they bite. So, um, I'm actually... I'm and they said human sacrifice was... It going on <laughs> so, so live think... on facebook human sacrifice <laughs> um, so let's uh let's try and get max to go in there so if you if you if i if i get in there, if you get in and then possible, uh, yeah, i won't film you going in okay there that's fair isn't it thank you that's what we'll do okay <laughs> so max is just climbing in there now it is very low it's you can't even um you can't even kind of get on your knees and crawl in it is you have to get on your belly and crawl okay. in like he's shouting so he must be Okay, I'm going to turn the uh, camera around again so you guys can see hopefully what I'm looking at. So let's just turn this around. Hi, Shirley. Good to see you. Thank you very much for watching. We're at Uli Barrow, also known as Hetty Pegler's Tump. 
um, and we are in Uli, so we're not very far, or Uli, we're not very far away from home. Um, and I'm just going to poke my camera in. Okay. Um, so Hello, everyone. Now, um, let me move out the way. So we are in what is known as the antechamber. Now, um, I don't know what you can actually see on there. So, um, do you want me to take it? it? Yeah, okay. Take right. It. Now, I don't. I'm really sorry if this drops out, guys. But we are actually in the entrance at the moment. Um, there are several chambers off here and we have got a much, much more space in here. So I was hands on knees coming in and I can now stoop and walk around. There are several chambers in here. Now, according to the excavations, there were several bodies in here. Oh, that was just a bat. <laughs> um, in these different chambers. Um, uh, well, <laughs> that was close. <laughs> yeah, he almost bat slapped me as well. <laughs> um, there are a number of spiders in here, and here is one lovely creature. Um, now the energy in here is fantastic, and as I was saying uh, earlier about um, this place being linked to magic and witchcraft, this place is an entrance way, as you will, to the underworld, as I said. Um, you would come to Barrow Mounds if you were going to be doing some sort of ritual, as it is a place of power, as it were. Um, now these... This place has been extensively restored, and there's still more of these lovely creatures. Um, as you can see why she didn't come in. Um, I think the last time it was restored is in 2011. Hello everyone! Um, but there is... Oh! Just press the, um, press the button at the top. Which button? <laughs> the button on the handle. Okay, the handle, right, okay. There you go. Aha! Press right, the we have there. the technology. There you go. And, ah, there we go, right. I thought I was getting left alone in the dark there. Um, <laughs> Okay, I've, I've been told not to do any more spiders by Sally. Okay. okay. Um, now, if you were to come to this place, the whole idea behind it, as I said, with the um, the whole idea of death and rebirth, that's something that's played out within the occult, um, witchcraft, folklore, over the centuries. Um, you even see it within uh, things like Dante's Divine Comedy, as well as practices uh, done by groups such as the Hellfire Club in the caves at High Wycombe. Now this, um, where you would go down into the underworld, ritualistically die, not really, hopefully, um, and then be reborn. That's the idea of uh, death and rebirth. Yes, so it's the whole idea of cycle. Coming back again, renewed. Now I'm going to try and find my way out of here without causing okay. mayhem. Okay, um, back, so um, I'm going to pass you back to the lovely Cassandra. And then I'm going to make my graceful way out of here. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Let's flip the old screen around while Max is climbing out of there. Bless him. There we go. Okay. So, <laughs> back outside again. Um, did you guys see the bat? That was pretty cool. We see a lot of bats at home, but um, it's pretty cool to see one not at home for a change. So, is there something below there, Sal said? It's quite possible. I mean, if you're if you're going to be choosing a place to bury your venerated loved ones, your ancestors, the important members of your society, you're going to choose somewhere which is special. So there may well already be energy there that was there long, long before this barren mound went up. So a, they may well have been in tune to these places of energy. Exactly. We are quite high up. Um... And we have it's someone not... just down the road from High Wycombe Caves. Brilliant. Oh, that's Gail. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll have to. We'll have to. Um, we'll have to do that one. We'll have to go in there. There's some good so, so um, that is interesting, and it wouldn't surprise us if there was something below. It does feel, for me, my my feet feel really like um, as if something wants my attention. You know, low down, and I I kind of guess that that was because the doorway is really low because the entrance to this is very low. Um, but it could be that there are, there are things underneath our feet, of course, with this piece of ground being kind of raised a bit as well. We are quite high up. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see that because it's dark. Um, 
we are quite high up where we are at the moment. Um, two ladies are still here. Um, I've got a gentleman here who is also identifying as a witch, Max. Um, oh, just to, to, to the right hand side. He's here almost as a guardian um, and I want to talk about guardian energies before we go any further as well. Um, at the front of this Sparrow Mound, if, we ever get, if you ever get to come and visit uh, Yuli and you come and see the Barrow Mound itself, um, at the front entrance you will see two stone sort of markers, one either side of the entranceway, um, just before the little pathway up to the actual door. Um, and what, what I saw there were two energies, this is really the only way I can describe it, um, earth energies connected with the land uh, very, very strongly as guardian energies here. And I do feel that if anybody came here wanting to disturb the site, we did say earlier um, that bones have been removed, skeletons have been removed, if they weren't treated with respect, I do feel that these guardian energies would be able to um, cause some sort of uh, mischief or some sort of um, you know unpleasantness or something like that to somebody who was disrespectful to the area. What have we got with Gale? I think there are more bodies in there like con like a concealed entrance. There's actually a cave in isn't there further back? There looks right? to be a, there looks to be a cave in although um, I'm not entirely sure there could well be more bodies. Um, I, only the, the area we can only go into is really quite small um, so four Four or five chambers. I, mm. um, but when you look at it from above, it's like it goes further back, um, and as it goes further, because you can walk, you can actually walk on top of it. Um, so earlier on, we, we took a brief walk actually on top of the mound itself, um, and you can see on top there's a dip um, at the back. So it could be that there there are more chambers further back that have been caved in. There may even be ones uh, bodies located further around. Uh, we are also nearby. Um, Five minutes if that down the road there is Nymphsfield Long Barrow. Uh, this one uh, has had all the soil removed so you can see the chambers and you can walk around inside there. You're right, Deb? Yeah, grabbing my ankles again. <laughs> um, and you can walk around uh, above ground, you don't have to worry about bats, snails, spiders. <laughs> the snails the, the, are scary more than anything. All the lovely stuff <laughs> which makes it perfect for a place to come and do witchcraft. Yes, the, the key here is that currently. We're in 2017 and people are still doing witchcraft here and this is what we want to really bring across to people with these live events that Max and I are doing. Uh, we want to visit um, locations, talk about the folklore, talk about the local history and the folklore of places that, that we can investigate, that we can um, come and tune into and sense the energies that are here and help to really kind of revive that folklore, at least keep it keep it going, at least keep it um, a topic of conversation and, and an interest for people because we do feel that the folklore is something that needs to be held on to and there, you know, there are some amazing it's... writers, there are some amazing books out there about uh, folklore and you know you could probably you can google the folklore of your local area and that sort of thing. Um, but it's something that's fallen out of common knowledge. Yeah. You can ask um, anyone in your local area and they may be a lot of traditions that may, they may even do themselves. Um, I mean there's a great one in Froster which I am still to my um, dismay I haven't asked anyone but every single year nothing to do with bonfire night um, lots and lots of scarecrows pop up and <laughs> it, it's, do, yeah. it's just in that little village mm -hmm. uh, and they make loads and loads of scarecrows and they've got different themes so last year they really went all out they did Harry Potter so they had Ron Weasley on a broomstick <laughs> flying around they actually made yeah. a Quidditch set yeah. which was fantastic someone did mm -hmm. a Hagrid at the side of the road which scared the buggery out of me driving home one night <laughs> um, it's traditions like that it's, it's the local traditions and the folklore that we really want to kind of keep alive um, but also linking that in with the spiritual energy that's here and being able to commune, being able to talk and have a conversation with the spirit energies that are around us locally as well. Um, who is stood behind you both? Ah, oh, Lisa's! That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Those two have just said that at exactly the same time. We'd better turn around. We'd better have a look. Okay. I would say that it, to me, I can see something on top. Me too, yeah. Um, not yeah. actually in front of it, but standing yeah. on top of the... I don't know if you can see it, but <laughs> up here. So, um, I wanted to make sure I wasn't standing on any of the um, That's the top there, so it's not it's not actually that 
height. It's about head height, but are. someone standing up there. That that's what yeah. I picked up on. Can you can you girls describe what you saw? Um, and Craig as well. Can you describe what you saw behind us? Because there are energies all around us at the moment, and there's a lot of interest going on with the spirit energies that are here. Um, we've had male and female energies here. There's a gentleman here who's identifying as a witch. The two ladies that are here um, are talking about respecting the land, having respect for the the local area. Um, and I love that you guys said that at the same time. That's uh, that's fantastic. We love that stuff. That's brilliant. Really good. So earth energies that are here. So the guardian energies at the front, very important. Um, and also what we wanted to do is talk more about different types of energies because we get this a lot on the ghost hunts. I, I go out and work on ghost hunts and people generally kind of talk about the spirits of people that have passed over. However, um, there are lots of other different types of energies that you can tune into and it's not just the energy of people that have passed over. There are lots of different types of energies as well. So hooded figure, uh, you both saw a hooded figure. That's fantastic. That's great. We like that. Sal nice. saw someone in white. I wonder if we've ah. got a druid. Um, the energy behind you dressed in white. Dressed in oh, white. There we go. Excellent. So we've got two Super. at the same time. This is fantastic. So you guys really are good. all getting the same thing yeah. at the same time, which is yeah. great. They're, they're coming through split seconds after each other. So it's interesting is... that it's a shame that you can't see actually guys because um, we are quite high up but the, it's like this would be a communal place for people to gather. Obviously when somebody's passed away and, and you know they're, they're kind of burying someone here or they're, they're letting somebody pass over to the underworld, pass over into the world of spirit um, at this location, I get that people gather here for other reasons as well. That it's well, not just burial, it's celebration, it's changing of the seasons, it's it's a, it's a full call. If you view it this way, you're, you're coming to, for example, on special days, people might go and visit the graves of their, their loved ones. That's something that we mm. still do today. Yeah. But this is it on a community-wide scale. Yeah. You've got the whole village yeah. that will come to be able to have that turning the season feast with all the ancestors. So knowing that they are there yeah, in spirit exactly. with you guys at the same time you're celebrating, which makes you feel connected to your loved ones, to the other world, to the land, which is so vitally important and something that we are losing nowadays. Yeah. So many of us live in concrete blocks. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Cut off from the land and it doesn't take much to go ten minutes outside of the town to find these places, even if it's a little patch of woodland. They're and pick up everywhere. The yeah, they're everywhere. And, and something that, that we always say on, on the ghost hunting events, um, sorry, that's um, so, behind cover then. <laughs> <laughs> something that we say sometimes also is that I've lost track of what I was going to say. Um, we were saying that you should, uh, the spirits are everywhere yes. and always wanting to communicate. So even in your modern house or even in a modern location, they'll be coming up from the earth. Remember, we're, we're looking at earth energies. Energies are so busy. Daniel, it's that time of year. Um, we're, we are approaching um, Halloween. We're, we're at the end of September now, 2017. For those of you that are watching this after the fact, um, we're approaching Samhain by the old calendar, which yeah. is old New Year by the, uh, by the old pagan reckoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've got um, Kabbalistically entering into a new year now, um, and also, you know, the sort of the next four weeks, we are really looking very uh, strongly at new beginnings, transformation, um, and going into winter, of course, and preparing winter so we'll be talking about that as well. Egyptian ankh symbol heavily shown. It's, well, it's, it's Max, that's it's, him. It's there. It's there, that's <laughs> there. what it is. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we can play Max for that one. Um, yeah, it could be that you're picking up on that, Kay. Um, however, not to rule it out for, um, for where we are as well. But if, if you're picking up on that, despite you may have seen that, you may have not, but the idea of the ankh is immortality. Mm -hmm. It's um, which is something that would have been given to, in say, Egyptian belief, it will be given to someone when they're passing over, which shows that they have this um, part of them that goes on, this immortality in, a, in that sort of sense. Right, right. Good. So I hope you hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, should we have a little look around, and should we should we show this entrance again, or should we stick a little bit? Let's turn this. Let's turn the camera around a second. move this so you can get a, another look at, at sort of where we are um, 
So that's the entrance where I've just made Max crawl in there. So if you're just tuning in now, um, when you come to watch this again, when it goes on, uh, we'll put this on YouTube as well, so you guys can can watch it again later. Um, feeling of the cult group, I like that. Um, that's it's... more likely to be the uh, the energy of a group, um, maybe a, a coven, a uh, coven. as it were, uh, to use yeah. that phrase. I mean this. Yeah. In traditional folk belief, you've got all these different places. A classic place to meet would be, say, at a crossroads. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, at a yeah. barrow mound, at some yeah. hidden woodland. Absolutely. Now, these are key, key places um, to perform magic. And magic is something that we are losing nowadays. There has been a, has been a massive resurgence with it. And it's pretty hard to even look around nowadays without somebody having some sort of occult symbolism on their clothing. It's fashionable right um, now. But yeah. so few people actually understand what they're wearing. For True. for all they know they could be wearing something about a, a sigil for finding good fish or something <laughs> bizarre. Yeah. Um, there's, there's all that going on. I mean it, it is it is now starting to become um, uh, more of an interest. There's lots more groups on Facebook and, and things like that that are looking into the witchcraft side of things, the traditional magic, um, the healing, um, the occult side of things, the, the cannibalistic side of things. There's a lot of that going on and we just want to raise people's awareness um, of that but also the folklore. It's so important to us to, to tune into the traditions um, that are here. Who's picking up on a dog? Somebody has just said in my ears, one of you guys, I'm scrolling back through the messages, is anybody? Someone said Maple, or am I looking? Yes, Tristan. That. that was K. Been done maple okay. been done, okay. Possibly, possibly. I just heard that one of you guys has picked up on the energy of a dog here, and there is a dog here. Um, hi, Abby, good to see you. Hello, Abby. Um, we're at Yuli Barrow Mound. Um, we're looking at five thousand over 5,000 years of history right now. Um, so, anything else we need to say before we go? Anything else you guys want to say? Um, anything about you want to ask? Anything you want to ask? We are going to be uh, rosemary being used. Yeah, that would certainly be a herb that would be used for yes. rosemary. Ro rosemary is a really good classical herb. Uh, ironically, the only thing I can remember is it's good for bad memory. Um, <laughs> Um, all, all, all the other uses have gone completely, um, but I, I'm happy, if you want to know more, send me a message, I'm happy to, to talk to you about plants and green things. Um, we, we're planning to do these videos um, as often as we can, so we're hoping once a week um, to visit one of the uh, a location like this that, that has um, a sort of interesting local history to it. Um, usually connected with either the spirits or the ghosts or the witchcraft or the um, the elements of, of uh, those sorts of things. Sal has just said glass being broken. I don't know if Sal knows but near to where we live which isn't far from here there used to be an old glass. There used to be an old, uh, old glass blowing it was done by um, I get the uh, proper information it was uh, run by Flemish people um, and the Winchester Mansion Trust um, uh, a very nearby location um, actually have some of that glass on display. Um, so we're looking 15th century here, so very, very old. Um, so we, so it glass being broken, glass that, being broken. That, I mean, it, that it could, could be, be a, could even be here. Ritualistic, it could be um, um, in a ritualistic yeah. way, absolutely. Craig keeps sensing someone to Max is right. That's Just good. No, sorry. I am um, you're right, technically. You're probably seeing it's reversed. Daniel, Daniel's going to get himself some rosemary. That's good. That's brilliant. Um, Sal didn't know that. Okay, there was something else. Somebody else. Something else. What? Where's the next location that you're going to? We're not sure yet. We haven't decided. We've got a list. We've got, um, we've got, we've got a list. It would be a secret location, and basically it's secret until we think of it. Um, <laughs> if there's anywhere that you can think of that we should go and visit and have a look around um, and and look at the the history. Um, Look at the folklore, look at any um, old stories that, that should be investigated, that could be looked into, um, that sort of thing. Something something else that I want to say is that Hetty Pegler's Tump, that's where we are now, Hetty Pegler was a man. That's what we've discovered from the research that Max has done today. Um, 
And Hetty, Hetty Pegler is supposed to be known as a local witch that um, somebody said that she'd been hung. We can't find any evidence of that online. Um, not picking up on her energy at the moment, but looking no, at the it. evidence online, looking yeah. at the history online, Hetty Pegler was a man. There was, it was Hester. Hester. And what we'll do, on the way back, we'll take a picture of the sign um, because I'm 90% sure I did see it on there so the name may well be on there so there's yeah. I know Hester and there's another one beginning with H yeah. they were the people that owned this land in the 17th century so it's, um, very, it's very interesting how yeah. you get that the local stories there's always truth behind local stories and local legends um, and there are lots of them around here that we want to dig into. Um, Cheryl Lisa's Forest of Dean, yes, we certainly Forest want to Dean's go there. Great. Love to um, go there. Got lots of movement behind us there. Mm -hmm. It looks, to me, it looks. Someone mentioned maypoles earlier, but I'm I'm looking up there and I can see in my mind's eye um, what looks to be like people dancing around holding hands. Oh yeah, people dancing too. So yeah. it's it's like some sort of celebration. We have mm. just gone past uh, Mabon. Um, for those who don't know that, that is the um, the equinox uh, with the day the same length of the night um, and that there would be a celebration then um, but it does look like people holding hands in celebration yeah um, so it feels positive energy it does feel like positive energy. it does feel good it does feel good although over that amount of time you know we're looking at thousands of years over that amount of time you're going to have something negative at it has some been, point it has been reused there have been roman finds here there has been um, that the Romans had pillaged this at some point. Um, so Roman coins, uh, various items like have been dug out in various excavations, I believe in the 1800s. Um, whether these things are on display, I don't know. Um, I did, however, uh, when I was last in London, come across a, um, a classical bit of witchcraft from Yulee. Um, it was a really classic curse. Um, it was written on a piece of lead. The tradition goes that you would have to um, steal this piece of lead from a, a church roof. Um, not that I'm recommending don't stealing. Don't do this at home. You will go to hell. Um, <laughs> God will Please don't, you. don't steal anything. Don't, don't, don't steal, steal anything. anything. It's a bad idea and you'll get lead poisoning. Um, but the idea is lead is... Um, you, would, you would scratch your curse into it. Um, I actually have a picture on my phone somewhere so I can put that up on there. Um, probably with the description as well. Uh, which is a really unpleasant curse for someone basically making sure that they get uh, vomiting and diarrhoea and they can never they can never go to the toilet or something like it's a now seems rather humorous but it would have been very very unpleasant at the time so the idea would have been to roll uh, the lid up and then pierce it with a nail uh, in this case and the nail would represent uh, your will so you're powering your will over that person creating your uh, intent to happen um, which is a very simple way of describing it yeah so there you go so there you go there's an example of something unpleasant um, that, that is from this local area connected with witchcraft and a couple of people that have said about passing drinks around sorry we'll come back there we go um, passing drinks around that certainly would be in a ritualistic sense um, absolutely and I feel connected with the Romans as well that, that would be quite important um, you've got things like back yeah, yeah, and yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the other thing somebody else said? Let me just scroll down. Uh, ritual, ritual drink, drinks. Yeah. Around. Hearing um, voices. I just heard something weird. Just as you put that, actually, Gail, um, to my right hand side. I really thought there was somebody there, but there's not a living person there. Um, but certainly feels very strong. Um, so yes, if you think of a, a place that you'd like us to come to, um, if you've got a local legend or, or a local story that you'd like us to come and dig into um, and see what we can sense there, see if we can get to the bottom of it, see if we can talk to the spirits there, try to get more information out, let us know. Um, we're hoping to do this on a weekly basis so you know hopefully join us next week um, and we'll see uh, um, what other locations we can go to and, and see what we can pick up on. It's getting a little bit chilly now so I'm, I'm kind of dreaming of a cup of tea. Yes, I heard that. Okay. It's funny because the more you talk, um, and the more actually that you talk about the location that you're at, um, and you're referring to the traditions that, that the spirits there link in with, the more they pay attention. It's like they're just all closed in around it, us, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I heard footsteps over to um, my left, um, just there, as if there was footsteps there. We had there. a 
sound which it was an unusual one, it didn't sound quite human. Um, it sound you know what it sounded like to me? What? Hoofs. 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 Heaps. Uh, hooves. Sheep feet. <laughs> Oh, it's not sheep. No, it's not no, sheep. No, there's, there's no sheep. No, it sounded like a horse or something. Okay. It sounded big. It sounded like hoof. I say hoofs. Sorry, I know that's weird. Hoofs. Hoofs. Um, sheep sounds. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, flutes in the air. Oh, I like that. I like that. That's nice. Okay, so I think we're going to sign off. So, um, thank you so much for watching, guys. And the energies that have come through tonight have been very, very interesting. We, we haven't been here long. Um, we'll see, we're outside and it's kind of chilly. Um, but the energies that have come through have been very, very interesting. Several of you, yeah, hooves. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, the Take guardians. The I can't do it. Yeah, it's yeah. The guardians at the front entrance are, are very interesting. Very strong, old, old earth energies, and I do feel that they are protecting here. Um, we've got two ladies coming through very strongly. A gentleman identifying as a witch himself. Um, so hello to all the male witches out there. Um, Male witches don't get a lot of uh, kind of attention. It's some, you know, sometimes they're referred to as warlocks or wizards. Um, we'll address that another day. I think we'll, we'll look at that another day. There's lots of different terms. I, I like the term troll cunning, which is uh, a Norse uh, way of um, talking about magic. And there's a whole yeah. school of it called troll. We'll, we'll do which another, we'll do another day. That, so that, but, yeah, um, that'll be interesting. So if you want to be a troll, be a good one. Be be one that does troll them. Be troll cunning, not uh, a nasty little bugger. <laughs> Lisa picked up on the mail as well. Well done. That's super. Right, okay, we are going to sign off okay. now. So thank you very much for joining us, guys. Um, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you for watching. All you folks that are watching, um, after the fact, this is a Facebook Live. So if you would like to come and join us um, on our page, Raven Mystic on Facebook, we would love that. So if you're not already watching on Facebook... Please look back on your live feed before we, before we clear off. <laughs> uh, Lisa's saying that there's something, so we will. So we right. will. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Keep moving it. I know. Sorry. Sorry. Um, we will. To look graceful. We are going to watch this back. <laughs> we will watch it back and have a look at and see what's been moving around behind us as well. Um, where was I? Uh, yeah, so if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere else, after the fact, this is a Facebook Live on Raven Mystic page on Facebook. Please come along and join us. It would be great to have you involved in our community. What I want to do is build a community of people who perhaps want that connection with the spirit world. They want to start to understand how to connect with the spirit world, how it all works, what it's all about. Um, what kinds of energies are out there, what kinds of things you can do to tune into those energies in a safe way. Um, and I want to start to build a community of people that are all welcome. Everybody is welcome. If you feel a connection with the spirit worlds in any way, in any format, whether it's just being aware that there is a spirit world, that's enough. That's absolutely fine with us. We welcome you and we want to help you. We want to um, allow you a, a place where you can feel welcome and understand the spirit worlds and, and get to know little bits, more information about the spirit world, about how it works, how you can interact um, in a safe way. And we're going to cover lots and lots of different topics. As Try well and give you a bit more here. information that you might not experience because so often you'll go on a ghost hunt and it's just there's someone here who's dressed like a Tudor. He shot himself. That <laughs> shot himself with an arrow. With with an arrow. <laughs> Quite skillful actually. Um, but so often mo what most people experience is uh, energies of people, um, not so much but energies of the land, um, mm. energies connected to magic. Yeah. Um, even non human energies, which is a whole other kettle of fish which we will talk about yeah, as well. Definitely. We're definitely gonna talk about that too. So so welcome to our community. Uh, join us like our page um, and, and join in with the conversations that we'll be having as well. We want, we want this as a community, we want you guys to join in um, and everybody is welcome here. So thank you so much. Um, you. We're also on uh, Instagram, Raven Mystic on Instagram, Raven Mystic UK on Twitter. Um, so if, you, if you're into those kind of things, come and join us on there as well. But for now, for Facebook Live, um, we're at the end of September 2017, Hetty Pegler's Tump which is where we are now, Yuli Barrow. Um, we are now signing off. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Cassandra Raven. This is Max Raven. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you Thank again you. next week. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye, -bye.